Yes, sir. All right, we're going to call the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting of Wednesday, February 7th, 2024, at 7.10 p.m. The first uh, item on our agenda is a continuation of the hearing for Steve Flagg, case number 2023-173 Huff Road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Brian Falk from Ira O'Connell here on behalf of the applicant um, who's with us and also our engineer, Kevin Quinn, who joined us at the last hearing. Yep. Um, Kevin's just going to set up some, some visuals for you while I walk through things. Um, just a reminder, um, we, had, we opened the hearing on November 1st and we had a continued hearing before you on December 6th. This is our third uh, session of the hearing. Um, so this is a special permit application to reconstruct pre-existing non-conforming single-family home on 3 Huff Road. Um, you can see Kevin setting up. We've got some images of, of the home. And then this is the proposed home that would replace the pre-existing non-conforming home. Um, last week I provided a plan by Mr. Quinn um, showing a few improvements to the property to benefit our neighbor at 7 Huff Road. Um, and I'll walk you through those. It's first added a line of six arborvitaes um, right along the property line here, um, help with the screening for our, our, our abutting neighbor. Um, the plan also shows, which was discussed at the last hearing, um, some um, grading of the driveway and a swale in this area to prevent um, water runoff. A concern was raised by the neighbor that the new uh, improved driveway might result in water coming onto her property. And so, um, these engineering changes should help prevent that from happening. Again, grading changes and a swale along the property line to address any, any water runoff issues. Um, and finally, we're showing an existing shed um, um, close to the property line that's going to be removed. There's three sheds on the property right now. They're all going to go. Um, as you may know, two of the sheds that are going to be removed are actually closer to the property line than what we're proposing. Um, so it'll be an improvement in terms of structures right along the lot line. Um, before the last hearing, I submitted a memo uh, to you addressing some questions the board had and, and going through some legal issues. We went over those issues last time. I'm not going to rehash completely. I just want to summarize where we left off uh, from our position. Um, so again, application for a special permit. This is under section 345 of the zoning bylaw and chapter 48, section 6, what they call a section 6 finding special permit um, to allow uh, the reconstruction of a pre existing non conforming single family home. Um, the case law on these types of special permits has clarified that a full reconstruction is permissible um, and that you may even extend uh, certain non conformities, and, and we have that on this plan. We have heard concerns from, from board and, and um, members of the public that this was originally a mobile home. We don't dispute that. Uh, but it's since been renovated internally and externally extensively to the point that it is now a permanent structure used for single family residential purposes. Again, this is the home here. This is the proposed um, replacement structure on the same property. The zoning bylaw does not define residential structure, nor does Chapter 48, Section 6. It's used, it's not defined. Um, we have found no cases stating that this type of home, the existing home, doesn't qualify as a residential structure uh, for, this per for this type of a special permit. We have found no cases on um, negating what we're proposing to do. Um, we did find a land court case. Um, that holds that an uninsulated and unheated summer cottage qualified as a residential structure for purposes of a total reconstruction for a brand new home. Um, we find that our home is in far better shape um, than that uh, uninsulated, unheated summer cottage. Mr. Flagg's home is permanent, year-round dwelling for a single family. It has a permanent roof, exterior walls, anchored to the ground with cement footings, it has an attic with insulation, it has a deck with cement footings, heating and air conditioning, standard interior walls, modern kitchen, and bathroom fixtures. The house meets the zoning bylaws definition of single family dwelling. It does no longer meet the definition of a mobile home under the zoning bylaw. So separate from those technical issues, I just want to get back to the, the before and after here, because I think that's important. Um, this replaces an old, oddly constructed home with a new home. This would be a huge improvement to the property, an improvement to the neighborhood, and we think an overall improvement to the town. Um, your legal standard for this type of special permit 
that the new home would not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming residential structure. It doesn't say it, it has to be an improvement. It just says it has to be not substantially more detrimental. I honestly don't think anybody can make that determination, couldn't, couldn't make that determination, that this is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than what we're proposing to do. This is a significant improvement. I think you can make those legal findings, um, and we encourage you to do so. Um, happy to address your additional questions tonight, and we look forward to your decision. Thank you. Before I turn it over to the rest of the board, I'm still, I still have the same thoughts in my head that I, I talked about uh, last time. The first issue you had is, is the original home burnt down in the 70s, from what I understand. Uh, you have three years for reconstruction on that. That that lapsed. Then this camper trailer showed up, and then over time, somebody built a roof structure over it. Uh, the camper trailer is, in essence, still there because that's why the supports come down in front of it. The same shape of the trailer is the same shape of the structure that's there now. Um, you had the reconstruction portion of it, and that time ex expired. You, you got a, a trailer in there that, uh, or a camper in there that you, it got converted over somehow or another to what it is today. I don't know if that necessarily resets the clock to uh, skip the fact that you missed that three-year window of reconstruction. I agree with what you said last meeting that that could stay there forever because you, you're past a 10-year point. I had asked you to try to explain to me how this is a residential structure. That's what I'm struggling with. And I said that at the last meeting, and I'm still struggling with it today. I don't know if you can yeah, help think, me through that process. I mean, frankly, um, Mr. Chairman, this is a home that a single family lives in. It's a permanent structure. And your zoning bylaw and the chapter of the general laws I'm talking about doesn't define residential structure. So we get to, if that's not a residential structure, I don't know what it is. It's a I don't know what structure. it is either, that's why I'm asking. It's a permanent structure. It's assessed as a single family home. It's a permanent structure that a single family lives yeah. in. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, I don't know why that being there forever is not is better than, than an improved home in that neighborhood. We're currently encroaching into a right of way. This would eliminate that encroachment. We currently have a zero setback along that lot line. We are improving that to, I think, six feet, seven feet total. The, the side setback along Seven Huff Road, we're only increasing it by two feet. We're taking a, a skinny lot that is a buildable lot. It's 50 foot, 5,000 square foot. We meet those requirements. And instead of putting it here, close to the lake, encroaching on the lot line, we're relocating it here with a modern structure. Again, I don't, I don't see how that's not, um, does not meet this legal standard. It is, is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, and I, you know, to your point, um, how is it a residential structure? I, I, I say to you, how is it not a residential structure? How, how is a single family home not a residential structure? Regardless of how it came to be. We don't like the history of the property any more than you do. This isn't, this isn't great for us. Mm -hmm. But it's pre-existing non-conforming. It can stay there forever. It can be improved within the existing setback. I don't know how that's preferable to Re re relocating it into a better spot on the lot, um, solving a number of zoning problems, moving it further away from the lake, and then adding these additional improvements to make the property function better with respect to its neighbor. Anybody else have any questions? No. And to the board first, and then I'll open up to the floor. Thank you. Ronnie, you have anything? Um, the only comment that I that I ha have, it's not mainly a question, but this begs the situation that whatever the circumstances were at the time of uh, when the uh, the uh, I'm looking at it from the get go. There was a cottage there, mm -hmm. right? Now there was a there's a trailer there. And he's, <clears throat> and I don't know whether this is because of financial situations and so forth. I'm thinking that's what it's about, and I have to agree that that is more presentable than 
then, uh, then uh, you know, that structure to that because that begs a situation that, okay, today we don't have enough money to, to do what we want to do, and time helped us out with that, and now this is what they want to do. Um, the septic is all right as far as I, and the, and the well, right? It could be replaced. It's going to be replaced with both the they're, go, they're going to both be replaced. So, so, so I, I understand your thought process in that. <clears throat> did the owner of the property do these improvements? Did he own it when? He did not. Did not. Did he buy it like this? He did. Okay. So, the as far as a financial hardship for the oh, owner, the that, original that owner that that suffered the loss and, and got to that. I think that's a separate issue, right? I mean, if, no. if you bought it like this, so and you inherited what was there, so it's kind of a hard argument to say that it's a financial issue for them, and that's not part of our decision process, anyways. Financial typically mm -hmm. to come into it, but the um, he didn't suffer the loss; he bought the loss, <laughs> and basically, right, is what it comes down to. So. Um, I don't know if you got anything else with that. I'm going to ask Dan and John if they have anything uh, that they would like to add to it before I open it up to the floor. Well, one one more comment. Yep. No, you it, can have as many as you want. Um, it, again, you're talking waterfront property, mm -hmm. all right, and that's like gold. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. I I just look looking at that and that. I think it's a hell of an improvement, and I know in the, at the last meeting, well, there was comments made about, well, I know there's a trailer under there. I know there's a trailer under there. Well, he was trying to, in my opinion, he's trying to make it look as 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 financial situations changes and so forth, and I I don't look at this as he's, he's trying to sneak something in. I don't either. The the problem that I personally have with it. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not saying as a board, M myself as an individual, the the by the zoning bylaw is very clear about reconstruction after catastrophe or demolition. Right. That that time that's come and gone, and because nobody pays attention and something gets gets put up on a piece of property, I don't think it eliminates that bylaw just because you got away with it. It's like okay, so. I get a get out of jail free card, right? Like Monopoly. Yeah. Um, if I may, Mr. Chairman, yes. I mentioned this last time. Those are two completely separate provisions of the zoning bylaw. A, a pre-existing non-conforming structure that burns to the ground. You're yep. correct. You have three years to rebuild it mm -hmm. as of right, not mm -hmm. by special permit, as of right, mm -hmm. in the exact same spot. Mm -hmm. That that is not what we've applied for. Um, what we've applied for is this structure that's there now, which is pre-existing non-conforming. Um, I don't, no one's disputing that it's pre-existing non-conforming. It's, it's been there for 10 years, um, <coughs> well more than 10 years, since the early 80s. Um, it's a completely different section of the zoning bylaw. So, um, I, I, you know, I frankly don't think it's... it's I don't, I don't, yeah, but I don't agree that one washes out the other, right? If you get, if you get through it with over time, and that's what I was just explaining to uh, Ronnie, <laughs> because the the time has lapsed and you you get your ten years right that doesn't eliminate the fact of of what happened with that lot before right I'm not I'm not disagreeing that that can stay there for whatever the the question before us is whether or not you're allowed to rebuild it I'm still struggling with the fact that it's a residential structure you and I will go back and forth on this forever and that's your job and this is my job so we can agree to disagree I guess. Um, what I'm trying to do is just make sure that everybody has the facts so they can make a good decision, right? I'm not trying to influence them as to what I'm what I'm thinking or not thinking. Um, I don't make up my decision until the very end because something could pop out of this conversation that changes my thought process, right? Um, it's just part of the process. Yep. So um, if Ronnie doesn't have anything else, I'm going to ask these other two board members. Then we can hear from the audience. What I will do is um, ask the audience that. There's a lot of information that came out last time. We have, we have addressed different things that came up. Um, the pitching of the driveway so we don't have the runoff to the well next door and, and things like that. Um, 
I just want new information because it's, it's not productive. Everybody will get frustrated and we just won't get to where we need to be. Um, Dan, uh, I'll start with you, Dan, and then we'll go on to John. Okay. I, um, I'm not convinced that they're seeking to replace a single family with a single family. I, I believe it's a, they want to build a single family and replace a mobile uh, a trailer. A camping trailer. So I have similar struggles to what you described. I, I you know, if there was an existing house there and they want to build a new one, and that would be a different story. But they're looking to build a single family and replace a camping trailer, in my opinion. Okay, John, are you online? Yes, sir. Do you have anything you would like to add? No, I think you know my feelings about this, whether or not, um, I mean, the last time I spoke with regards to this is that even our town council was shaking his head yes when I said to talk about a special permit. It was after the fact that just gentlemen had burned down and whatever time they put that trailer in and they built the bow, you know, above it and put a roof on it. but. I, you know, like looking at what Ron said, there was, there was a house there at one point in time. And if you looked at the whole neighborhood, there are still houses around there. So, I mean, I, I'm not ready to, to make an motion, and I'm not saying that I'm going to right this second, but to close the public hearing and make a vote on it to end it. I think we tortured not only the homeowner, but the uh, town council, his council enough in regards to what's going on with this. Um, we're just, and my personal opinion, if we deny this, we'll find ourselves in court. And uh, quite frankly, I think we we'll lose this hand to that. <clears throat> well, that's fine, John. So you can keep your opinions to yourself that way. As far as closing the public hearing, we're not going to do that yet. We're going to we give the opportunity for well, any new information that's going to come I'm forward. And look at the process and uh, listen to everybody again, and we'll take it from there. All right, so if nobody else on the board has anything, I'm gonna open it up to the floor before I recognize people. If we can just try to move through this. Um, and if somebody brings up a point, we don't need six people to bring up the same point. We're all pretty pretty smart here. We can we can understand the, the point of view, right? So who would like to go first? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, David Wilson, uh, 11 Huff Road, Douglas. Yeah. Um, just wanted to touch on a couple of um, a couple of things. Uh, sorry. Uh, so we're talking about still not a camping trailer. We all agree it's a, a camping trailer, but I'm saying that it's not a permanent residence. It doesn't have a foundation underneath it, right? So essentially, it's sitting on blocks, not a permanent. Not a permanent structure. Yeah, just direct, direct any conversation through the through the chair. Sure. I don't want to have yeah. you two going back and forth. Yeah, no I, I don't think it's fair to, to the applicant. Sure. Yeah. Or is it proper to do? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just saying it's not a residential structure. Um, I don't believe that it's a full-time residential structure uh, either. I, I don't think that you can live uh, in that uh, year-round um, as far as the water and sewer goes. Uh, there was no permits, uh, by someone's admission here, there were no permits ever pulled for any of the work that was done on this uh, trailer as far as the porch, uh, the enclosed living area, and the roof over the top. Uh, and the owners, uh, prior to the flags, uh, tried several times to rebuild uh, and were not allowed over a 30-year period. That's all I have. No. Anybody else have anything? Hi, Bob Latch of Town, Parker Road. Um, this structure is a beautiful structure here, but um, it's mowing the neighborhood. It puts the whole neighborhood out of character, is what it's doing. Um, it just doesn't, it doesn't look, even look right in that neighborhood. So. That's all I got for that. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? 
Yes. Don Molson, 11 Huff Road. I just wanted to say that this um, has come before the board. Um, in the past 40 years, this has been a non-conforming, non-building lot. Um, there has never been a okay to build in that 40 years um, according to the bylaws. I do want to restate that the, um, there is no foundation, so in that respect, I feel that it's not a permanent structure. Um, and I feel that um, we need to do the right thing according to the Douglas bylaws. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Hi. Um, I'm Marilyn. I'm not getting it. You don't have to get up. Yes. Uh, Marilyn Klosek. Yep. I'm the butter. Yes. Okay, on the west side. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, in the map, it highlights that the Board of Health has no record of the location of the septic system on the lot that my husband and I own. The contractor shall verify it is more than 50 feet from the location proposed the locus, proposed well prior to drilling the well. I'm not sure. There's a septic system. Uh, let's see, on the map, there's a septic system on the east side of our structure. Now, while you were talking about what is a permanent, can be a permanent residence, has to have insulation and what else? You mentioned it. Well, no, and actually, and that gentleman uh, mentioned it, but um, I'm not going to get into defining what the residential structure uh, okay. Is defined but as, um, but if you let me, let me interrupt you for one second. Insulation. As far as the well and the septic, um, this gentleman uh, explained that the intent is to replace both of them. So in order to do that, he's going to have to verify where the neighboring systems are in order to put his in to satisfy the Board of Health. So that yeah. wouldn't be something that came before us, but it. Okay. But it does. Got, they have guidelines in which they have to go. They can't just put it where they want. But it does say it has to be greater than 50 feet. From Correct. The that, that's all Board of Health rules, and he'd have to adhere to that and get them to sign off on that. Can I ask a yes, question? Yes, you can. Will the surrounding um, owners of the property, people that are here now, are they invited or do they get a notice? of the Board of Health meeting? Well, it, it's, a, it's a public hearing. You can answer that question if you could. If, if there's any relief request that affects the neighbors, the neighbors get a notification. But right? you get a certified notification. Meaning if it's within 50 feet, you get a notification if it's greater than 50 feet. Right? Yeah. 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 100 is enough. It, 150 it's 100 feet cold, but they, it, it can like be for a neighboring property. The Board of yeah. Health can weigh that down to 50, less than 50 as for the DEP. Okay. So the answer, the answer is yes, and you would be notified of the, uh, would the abutters be notified of that, if, or would it just be advertised? No, it's, it's butter, butter notifications typically, I don't, I, the, the Board of Health makes that determination, okay. but typically the Board of Health notifies abutters who are affected. Okay. For, for instance, if there was a... Right, uh, not the whole neighborhood, but yes. if it's just your property, exactly. then you would be notified. <laughs> yes. And we could attend. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it a public meeting or yes. is it a private meeting? No, nope. public meeting. Public. Okay. Because that, uh, where uh, that system, uh, septic system is for us, is 500 gallons. At the time it was installed, it was adequate and it made, co the, it compiled, complied with the Douglas Code mm -hmm. of allowing the two bedrooms right. to be installed. However, it doesn't look as though it's, uh, it looks pretty close. I'm not so sure it qualifies 
they'll, they'll pay they'll pay attention the they'll pay attention to that and they can't just put it where they want they have guidelines they have to go by uh -huh. and that that's totally different than what this is um, it's either a yes or no they can put it there right if the, if it's going to be closer then you would be notified if it's going to impact your property what about could you tell describe where that swale is you're talking about this gentleman will Kevin, right that point engineering, we did the, the plans. We're calling for a swale that will redirect because of your concerns about runoff. We're sloping this drive, we're picking up so it drains away from your property. We're calling for a swale that will drain around the proposed house away from your property. Okay, so would that swale be going on that public right away? No, it's going to be the between road? the fence between your property and the, and the proposed new jewel, uh, house. And what that does, ma'am, if, is if, if that swale will intercept any water that might be coming from your property or from this property toward your property, carries it to the pond. That would require a long swale from the low location of this <coughs> proposed <coughs> building. We're ready. <laughs> yeah, but it's also right next to our, where our septic to it's system. It's still benefit. It six, yeah. six, right. six, six into benefit. the ground. Mm -hmm. You don't think it could uh, go underground and go into our septic system? No. no. It's just redirecting surface water. That's all it's doing. And he's not talking about a ditch. It's just a minor swale that's going to redirect the water past the, and with him uh, between the two properties. Okay. Yep. And I'm just trying to help you through it. I'm not trying yeah. to rude no, you. I, I, I understand. Just I don't trying to understand keep it moving along. I that's all. Talking about. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No. No. Not yet. Um, Lashabelle, 56 Parker Road. I just wanted to reiterate that this piece of property was sold, advertised and sold as a mobile manufacturer three season home. It is not a year round what I would consider a structure. Nobody has ever lived in it year round in the 50 years that I have lived down there. Um, I think that house is a beautiful house. It's way too much for the size of the piece of property. Overwhelms the entire neighborhood. Um, that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Do you have anything you want to add to this, or I'm just trying to give you yep, all the I'm happy, to, that I'm happy to summarize. I, my client, Steve Fly, just wanted to um, speak briefly, and then I can summarize, and that's okay. Sure. Steve? Steve Flagg, 3 Huff Road, the applicant on the uh, uh, trying to build a new home. And um, my biggest concern or question is, yes, I'm trying to change a home to another home, but why, why do I have so much opposition with my neighbors where they've, they've never approached me while I lived here at this home? Um, why do you guys have so much against me putting a home Because if there's a home already there? So it's kind of a personal question. Maybe I can't ask that, but I kind of want to. Well, you can ask the question, but I don't think this is the format in which to do sure, it. Sure, sure. Uh, that, that would be yeah. something that I would encourage you to. Um, yeah, on the outside, yeah. No, I, I thought talk with them, meet them, meet them at the property, and have a conversation with them. Maybe it would be beneficial to you. Sure. Um, which we did. As far as what their concerns are. Yeah. Uh, well, which we did three years ago, mm -hmm. and showed them where the house was going and everything. And somebody said it was going to block their view, but I don't think that's anything to do with bylaws and stuff. If I'm blocking somebody's view, you know what I mean. So I, no. I, I, I can't see how they could be opposed to that. Um, so that 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 was one concern. Um, the other big concern is, again, like uh, my crew here was saying, a residential home on a residential lot, paying residential fees as an assessed residential home, and you just can't change it. I know we talked to the building inspector over here of changing it. They're just going to put me in front of the same board, and I'm going to be in the same boat that we talked about in, in the other meeting. So I'm just kind of laying it all on the line. So. And I think our next move would be the state, which we don't want to do. We were hoping not to do that. But if that's the way we got to go, that's the way Sometimes go. that's what it is. I'm going to speak for myself. I'm not speaking for the board. So the way I conduct myself, and I have for the last no, 13 you, years. You're 100% professional. No, no I'm, I'm just, give me two seconds. 
for the last 13 years been sitting on here, I've been trying try to be fair and consistent to everybody, right? So there's there's rules in, in, our, in our bylaws, right? I don't agree with all of them, and I don't like saying no, right? It, it, it's a very hard thing to do. I've been accused of sometimes being the no guy, right? Um, but it's to be fair and consistent, and there's questions question that I need to check off to make sure that if it was your neighbor, I can look at you and say, this is why I, I said what I said and came up with my decision, right? Um, and that's all I'm trying to do here. Nobody, <clears throat> nobody can dispute the fact that the new house is more attractive than the, than the older structure that's there, right? The, I'm still struggling with that, those same two questions that I had before um, about the time period in which for reconstruction and then whether or not this is a residential structure. Right. He's got the same problem I have, right? There is no definition for it. So, and, and I've searched, I, I've looked at different things. It's, and that's why if you paid attention to the last meeting, it's not a mobile home. A mobile home is totally different than a, a travel trailer or a camper, right? This was a travel trailer or a camper. There was pictures of them. Uh, it, they were in the file. I probably have them yeah, there in front of me, right? Um, nobody's disputing that. But because of the time period uh, elapsed, you're allowed that, or somebody before you was allowed to have the structure, and then then you came in, you came along and you purchased it. Sure. So now it's trying to come up with a logical reason why you can have it or why you can't have it, right? And so it, it's that's that's the problem that I have. So you, you brought up a point about your neighbors being opposed to it, and you don't understand it. Maybe is it, maybe you take another thirty days and you meet with them and and, and you see in that. No, but I don't think I don't think it's. I'm not trying to push. I'm not trying to push in that direction. But you brought it up. View, so yep. it's not going to change. You know. Okay. You know that's my that's my thought. So go ahead. Yep. All right. Thanks, Steve. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, I just I just want to once again we're gonna we're gonna have to agree to disagree, but I'm gonna say it one more time. Mm -hmm. the, the fire that burned down the destruction of the former home. Again, we're not applying under the section of the bylaw. It's a completely separate section of the bylaw. The relevant time is 10 years ago, or much earlier than that, which is when this structure came to be. That's the relevant time, because this is a pre-existing non-conforming structure. It's been there for more than 10 years. Under the um, amended chapter 40A, it is pre-existing non-conforming, and it is eligible for a section six finding special permit. It's a pre-existing non-conforming structure. It's also a residential structure. Is a used for single family purposes it has for decades. Um, whether we like the method of construction or not doesn't take away the fact that it is a pre existing non conforming structure used for residential purposes. Um, we can't find a definition of residential structure. Mm -hmm. I don't dispute that. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing in the bylaw that refutes the position that that's a residential structure. Um, and I think you honestly have to take a pretty tortured view of the bylaw and the reality to look at that and say that's not a residential structure. Separate from that, I again encourage the board in your deliberations to look at what your your jurisdiction is and what your required findings are. That this is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than that. That That's your standard to look at your deliberations. Is this more substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than that? What the improvements we're making both aesthetic and, and to our uh, impact our neighbors, I don't think there's any way you can't make that required by. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but I still think that the the fact that in the bylaw it says about the reconstruction after catastrophe demolition, um, time doesn't erase that portion of it, right? So that's the pot. The second part that I'm struggling with, right? And, and, and and respect, I'm not. I'm not totally hung up on a residential structure, to be honest with you. Um, respectfully, I think that the time to rebuild, as of right, the burned down home, we know that's past. That's right. not the time that matters. The time yep. that matters is, is that a pre-existing non-conforming structure by law? And it is. Anybody else have anything they want to add to this? <clears throat> Yes. I have a question. Um, I heard he said he was all set. Oh. The map shows that his driveway yeah. 
is going over into that public right away. That undetermined piece of property. We went over that last time as yeah, long as he do doesn't. Yeah, they have to cement it? That increases the water runoff. To near, I'm the one that, we're the ones that are going to be affected by that. Well, you won't be affected well, by anything. Why he doesn't own that property? Why should he be making uh, changes to it when he has no ownership? So what we're what we're charged with now, and I've said this at the last meeting, is within the confines of his lot. What he does on the outside of that, we don't have jurisdiction on that. And yes, you don't own it. The town doesn't own it. Town does not own it, and we don't have the right to decide what happens with that. That, that so is, any one of us in that area of the, any one property owner could do the same thing? Well, I have no idea. I'm not a lawyer and I couldn't give you legal advice. What I can tell you is we have no jurisdiction over that area, so I can't tell I can't tell them whether or not they can put the driveway in or can't put it in. That was established at the last meeting. <clears throat> Am I correct, Steve? That's that's right. And and typically with these with these private ways with the with the unclear title, which is very common around uh, lakefront and waterfront neighborhoods like this, uh, typically the abutting owner actually does own a legal right to the center line. That hasn't been adjudicated here, but I, that would not be an unlikely result if that were to be determined by a court. You good? I'm not sure I understand <coughs> what he said, but, no, yeah. you know, like, yeah. It's not an easy case, right? It's difficult for the applicant. It's difficult for the and the uh, abutters, and it's also difficult for this board to try to wrap your head around. Um, everybody's got their own thought process on it. Um, but if we don't have anything else to add to this, if the uh, rest of the board members don't have anything else to add to it, uh, one second. Um, what I'm going to do after I take your your last question um, will be to ask the board if they want what they want to do do they want to close the public hearing do they want to move into a decision do they want to continue it what do they want to do so that's the process so there you go what's your last question okay <laughs> okay let's say they they're going to make uh, they're going to be moving that cement there'll be a piece of cement in that public way. We talk about the driveway again? Yep, yep. I am. No, no, you can go ahead. All we right. can't answer you on it, but go ahead. Let's say somebody that's going to be cement. Yes. The rest of the road is dirt. Mm -hmm. um, Parker Road, old Parker Road. Let's say there's a resident, and there'll be new homes going up in that area mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Now let's say somebody in one of the back areas is running down to use that public way to access swimming for a couple of kids. And the father is, or the mother, the parent, is walking down and a four-year-old runs across that dirt, is running down to the pond and not looking, trips and fall, smashes her, falls on her face, who's liable for that? I have no idea. As I stated before, I'm not a lawyer and we don't have any jurisdiction over the private road. So that, that would be a civil matter that they would have to bring on their own. That wouldn't be a town issue. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to close the public hearing. Uh -huh. I'll second that. We have a motion made and seconded to close the public hearing. Any further discussion? No. No. Seeing as none, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Let's do a roll call vote. Since you two are remote, please, Dan. You can start off. Aye, Aye. 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 Aye Ron Forget. Aye, Jim Palmer. Fitzpatrick, aye. We want to move into a decision tonight, guys? I'll make a motion to approve the special permit on 2023-17 upload. Yeah, I would just like to entertain the question that I asked first of the rest of the board. Do we want to move into a decision as a board tonight? 
Yep. Yes. yes. Dan? I do. Okay. I do. Go ahead, John. Sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to make sure that we allowed people to answer. Yeah, well, okay. I make a motion to approve the uh, special permit for the new flag 2023-17. And with the plans that he has, approve them. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Well, that he just put up there, too. Okay, so before we get to the vote, just so everybody understands, motions are always made in a positive manner. Um, so that it's not to influence anybody, it's never done in a negative. So until the vote's done, that's just how it's done. Um, so any further discussion from anybody on this? No? So motion's been made and seconded to uh, approve the application for 2023. Uh, I don't remember what the rest of the number is. Dash 17. Dash 17. Uh, Dash 17. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. And I'm also opposed to it because I'm still struggling with the same process. Um, let's do a roll call vote on that for um, who's in favor? Aye, Jim Palmer. Aye, Aye Ron Forget. I drop a bottle. And those are opposed? I Dan Heaney. Fitzpatrick I. Unfortunately, you needed four votes to do it. Um, and then it pass. Decision will be typed up and you can and you'll be notified when to pick that up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You need me to anything else? Um, let me just. Get on here. Yeah, hold on one minute, Jeff. What the hell is that? Yeah, I don't understand that. I What's don't that? understand that. What's that? On the boat. Okay, so for everybody sitting in the room, um, because you don't remember what it is, the on a special per permit or a variance. It requires a super majority, which is four out of five, not a simple majority, which is three out of five. So even though you had three yeah. in favor and two opposed because he didn't have a super majority, it failed. That, that's correct. It took me a long time to get that around my head, too. I couldn't <laughs> understand how it was working, but yeah. that's what it is. Um, so that's why it's real critical that all the members show up. Um, if we had the two additional alternates, it wouldn't be as difficult. So that's why I was going through that process, trying to get John properly set up to, to make sure that everything was recorded. Um, one minute. Uh, no, we're good. You're good? You're good. Thank yeah. you. The other ones are, are uh, a little simpler. I don't think it's going to be as controversial. Fantastic. Thank you, Steve. Nice to see you guys. Um, Dan and John, Steve is leaving the meeting. I told him that we didn't need him for the next two cases. I don't know if you guys have anything that you need from him. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Steve. Take care, guys. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to worry about time limits anymore because we're well past the uh, advertised time. So the next uh, hearing is going to be for Stephen Bloom, 2024-01 for Summer Court. Um, the Town of Douglas Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing beginning at uh, 7 p.m. Wednesday, February 7th in the Douglas Municipal Resource Room, 20 Depot Street, Douglas, Mass. to hear the following. Um, Stephen Bloom is requesting a special permit in an RA zone district pursuant of Mass General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 9, and the Douglas Zoning Bylaws. Section 9.3 and Section 3.4.5, non-conforming single-family, single and two-family structures to construct a two-car garage on a pre-existing non-conforming lot on property located at Four Summer Court, Assessors Map 111, Parcel 1. Any persons interesting or wishing to be heard should appear at the time and place designated. Um, it's also been um, posted. Uh, the agenda has been posted on the uh, Douglas website, and uh, Zoom information is also attached to it. Do we have a representative? Yes, uh, good evening. Margaret Bacon, Allen Engineering, and I'm here with the, uh, the owner applicant, Stephen Bloom. Yep. And we're here 
here tonight requesting a, uh, uh, a variance for a proposed uh, 28 by 24 garage on his uh, existing residential parcel at uh, Four Summer Core. No. Um, so just I'm, to, I'm following you. Yeah, okay, so just to get your bearings, we got Lake Manchog up here. Yep. And then we have Summer Court right here, which is off of Bigelow Road. So it's a pre existing, non conforming lot. Uh, 540 square feet. Yeah, 540 small. square feet. Mm -hmm. And a septic system right up here that we're in the process of uh, replacing. And we've already been before the uh, Conservation Commission for this work. So the uh, proposed garage is outside the Conservation Commission's jurisdiction. But we've been before the Board of Health, Conservation Commission, and the Zoning Board now is the, the, the last. Uh, permitting for the uh, the proposed garage. As you can see, we really there's no other place on this lot that he can put that garage due to the tight, tight constraints and so looking at this Margaret is your from the sideline you're 6.5 feet is there any what's restricting you from pushing that all towards the center of the lot? Well, I guess enough of a driveway just to have it be able to turn in, you know, and be able to park in front of the driveway. Right, to come off the main driveway and loop in and get into the garage, you gotta have enough room. With the septic there and such and such, there's just not a lot of maneuvering. That location of the septic system is the proposed septic? Well, there's one there now it's that's existing, yeah. existing that prematurely failed, so yeah. we have a plan to, to to replace it with a, a little different system than what's there now. Yeah, and the only reason I'm asking this uh, in benefit of everybody else uh, as well, because it's a slab, you can be within 10 feet of the septic. If it was a full basement, you'd have to be 20, uh, 20 feet away, and you're 12, you're 12 12.1 feet. So you have two feet to play with. Um, the setback from the side is um, six and a half feet where you have room to move it and, and I'll open it up to the rest of the board. I'm just pointing out some of the some of the concerns that I would I would have on them. Um, but basically I heard what heard what we have to hear so I'm going to start with Jim to see if he has any questions or comments on this particular. No, I, I, I understand what's going on. Okay. Ronnie, do you have anything? Uh, well, I'm, I'm looking at the diet. The, uh, you want a bigger plan? <laughs> no, you got a bigger plan in your folder somewhere. You should have. Yeah, but um, okay. how's he getting? Where's the driveway to get, get into the? He's uh, coming in this way and then swinging in. It's a two. two oh, okay. Garage. All right. That mm -hmm. answers yeah. my question. Yeah. 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 yeah it's a circle driveway. Yeah. Now it looks okay. like. Right. Yeah. It's a yeah. I was I was looking on the left hand and side. The doors are going to be pointed towards towards the side, not towards yeah. the street. Yeah. So yeah. We've got to have enough room to, to loop in and, yeah. and back out. Back out. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the distance from the since he brought that up, uh, Margaret, from the sideline to the uh, garage? From the sideline. On the right, on the right side, not the 6.5, the opposite side. He said he needs room to oh, swing in. Now. What, how much distance do you have to your property line? 35 feet. 35 feet, okay. Dan, do you have anything? No, I don't. John? Uh, no, I don't. I see the, uh, I see the plant here. And yeah, about 35 feet, so you're thinking about the car backing in and driving up. So he's just going to eliminate the horseshoe. That's all. Put the garage there. No, no issue. Anybody in the audience have anything? That's my wife. She's all set. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> I would never make a statement like that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what 
what I'm struggling with, Margaret, is is typically I like to have 10 feet, and I do that uh, per the building code for fire separation, um, assuming that somebody sneaks a shed in on the property line um, and gets away with it for 10 years and he doesn't catch it, right? Um, we just heard what happens with those time limits. Um, is there any possible way that we could sneak that over three and a half feet to get that 10 feet on that property line? For your 35 feet from the end, I think I could swing my dually in there and that's 21 feet long, so. Well, my concern is that if we start wiggling it too far over this way, we have a, our well is up in the front of the property here. Yep. And, it's, and we know that the well pipe is buried uh, somewhere in a straight line running down and around to the corner of the house. Mm -hmm. And Seven years ago, when we put in the last septic, we didn't get anywhere near it, and I don't know if we're going to tangle with it when we go to put the garage. Um, so, so you may anyways? I'm pretty confident with yeah. where it is we're fine. Yeah. I'm just trying not to push my luck between a straight line between here and the house, that's all. Because there were existing trees on the property, and it was you can kind of see where it was snaked through, and so far we're avoiding it. So Mr. Chairman? Yes. I would uh, I would also like to see that garage move 10 feet from the lot line. I think there's still plenty of room to swing a, a vehicle in, get in that garage. So I think a 10 would be a, a much better number than 6.5. All right, and the lot line is at quite an angle. So are we going from, you know, the, the building's going to be this way so we talking you know 10 feet at the minimum in? at the at the minimum side so yeah we're not because you could get 10 feet if you went up the other corner the garage is already skewed so if you notice I picked up the folder and I went like this yeah what I was doing was going a straight line from from the well to the house and it goes through the corner of that house uh, the garage where you have it skewed if you go on a straight line so uh, I was trying to rationalize what you logic was on that okay so yeah. you could either straighten out that garage to get your 10 feet or you could or you could slide it over a little bit okay so um, sure. one minute yep I'd have to look at it but I would assume so yep well we get a short enough length of the garage which is unattractive I mean yep and I'm not telling this is a board decision so I'm not telling you this is what you got to do I'm just telling you what my concern is right yeah I mean obviously I'm trying to keep it as far back this way as we can. Yep. Um, reason one, of course, is to have the turn in for the driveway. Reason two is when you come in up uh, summer court towards the property, we mm -hmm. don't want to have a big, huge garage blocking the whole front of the house. Um, the, when you come in naturally up the center of the driveway here, the house is visible, the lake is mm -hmm. visible, everything else, right. the property yep. is... I get it, but I, I, don't, I don't see where three and a half feet is going to, and, that, and actually that's giving you 15 feet of relief by asking you to move over three and a half feet. So I'm going to uh, see what the building commissioner wants to offer on this. Well, just with regards to the, the water line, they usually poly tube that you could put an expansion onto that line if you needed to. So if that was in the way, you can't move those lines. Right, yeah, the, yeah, the well line, sure. Yep. Chances are you're going to hit it, any, even if it stayed where it is now, if it is, in fact, going in a straight line, because your overdig on the foundation is going to be big enough to work in the hole, so you're going to be two or three feet wider than what the foundation is anyways. You know, I think we could possibly do, too. If, since this is a septic repair, this is a slab, I, mm -hmm. could, I could try to move that garage closer to the septic and, and ask for a waiver from the Board of Health, um, and, and that might get you further away from the front, front point. Yeah, and so, right, right, and still yeah. not, you know. So that would help on, on the street setback. I was kind of turning a blind eye to that one. Uh, right, but yeah, so the, I, I, Because I, that requires 50 feet, I believe. Uh, right. And you're at 16. Well, they hit, to see the shell, 16 feet, but it is a, a tight back. lot, so. Yeah, yeah this, the 16 feet to the street is actually kind of fictitious because the, the lot line that we have here is the a butter line to what is property owned by the campground and then right. there's an easement mm -hmm. for the road yep. on it. Yep. You, can, you can actually park a full-size pickup truck in front of where the garage is going to be and it doesn't even get anywhere near the road. So it's, it's, it's probably 25 feet between the front of the building Except and the road. for when you have somebody like Margaret pinpoint where your property lines are so even though right, I agree. even even though uh, aesthetically it looks like you're in your yard you're not so anyways let's not worry about the 16 feet I don't want to go down that 
sure. path for you. Appreciate that. Um, if we can get that 10 feet away, I think that's the the impression you got from uh, the chairman and myself. Anyways, the uh, other three members didn't appear to have a an issue with it. Um, is is that, that. Some, if that's something that you you can make work if yeah. um, if they were able to move that over 10 feet, Dan, would you be comfortable with that? I would. All right. Uh, John, do you have any issues other than uh, what we brought up? No, I think it's probably a great idea with the 10 feet. So uh, I understand where you know, we're both coming from. I remember just doing one of these recently, and you may want to want to fix something at six feet you on the other guy's property if it's a big ladder. Huh? So yeah, I always reframe to say 10 feet should be the deal. Yeah, and, and just deal. this is a historic moment because I like 10 feet. Dan happens to like half of the setback, which is 12 and a half. So you got two and a half feet out of him. You're doing good. You're doing good. I'll take it as a so, win. Yeah, take it as a win. Ronnie, you have anything? No. No, I'm fine. No. So um, if we don't have anything else on that, do we want to move to a decision tonight, guys? Do you want to close the public hearing? Sure. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Um, any further discussion? No. Seeing as none, roll call vote, please. Go ahead, Dan. Aye, Dan Heaney. Aye, John Lombardo. Aye, Ron Forger. Aye, Jim Palmer. Fitzpatrick, aye. Okay, what's the pleasure, guys? Uh, move to a decision? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Dan, let's do this one. <laughs> okay, I make a, uh, a motion to approve the special permit request for Stephen Bloom. And that as long as the garage is no closer than 10 feet to the sideline. Okay, do we want to reference the plan by Allen Engineering and Associates? And it has a civil engineering stamp of 10 18 2023. The date of the plan is October 1st, 2023. The plan does show six and a half feet, though, and my motion was 10 feet. Right. Thanks for the correction. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we have a motion uh, made and seconded to um, approve the plan as amended um, to show 10 feet to the uh, left side property line. All right, so I'm going to. Submit an amended, an amended plan. Submit an amended plan. Um, as soon as possible to uh, Jen in there. Sure. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And roll call, John. Uh, Dan? Aye, Dan Heaney. Bobara, aye. Ron Forget, aye. Palmer, aye. Fitzpatrick, aye. So uh, if you can get that in as quickly as possible, it, it typically takes anywhere from two to four weeks for us to get our decisions done. But as soon as it's done, we'll notify you and okay. you can pick it up and then you get your 20 day appeal period. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next uh, hearing is for Brad Raiden, 2024-0236 Birch Hill Road. Bear with me for a minute. Yep. Let me find Aha. Hiding. <clears throat> the Town of Douglas Zoning by uh, Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing beginning at 7 p.m. Wednesday, February 7th in the Douglas Municipal Resource Room, 20, 29 Depot Street, Douglas Mass. They hear the following application. Brad Reardon is requesting a special permit in an RA zone district pursuant of Mass General Laws 40A, Section 9, and Douglas Zoning Bylaws, Section 9.3, and Section 3.4.3 non conforming structures to reconstruct a single family home on a pre existing non conforming lot on property located at 36 Birch Hill Road, Assessor's Map 284, Parcel 20. Any persons interested in or wishing to be heard should appear at the time and place designated. Um, the agenda was also posted in on the Douglas website and the, uh, along with the Zoom information. Do we have a representative here? 
Les Stevens, 31 Brookside Drive, Douglas, uh, representing Brad Reardon for 36 Birch Hill Road. Um, what we're uh, requesting before you is um, it's a single story structure uh, that was damaged due to fire and we are replacing it with a uh, raised ranch home. We also are removing the uh, garage and barn area. Um, we're building on the existing footprint of the original house, uh, which was roughly a 28 by 48 um, home uh, with some irregular foundation shapes. Um, and we're removing the, the garage. Um, what's in your packet is a uh, a photo of the new home that's being proposed on site. Um, the existing home is uh, was built in the 50s and was damaged to a fire. Um, so we're working on replacing that structure. With uh, with regarding the neighborhood, um, any this home is a single family home and it will, uh, will fit in with the neighborhood. It's it's not. Um, you know, oversized in any way because there's moderate houses that are two stories and, uh, you know, capes and uh, split entries as well as some bungalow style, I would say, uh, in the neighborhood. So th this fits in, in the neighborhood. Um, there might be a few colonials in the neighborhood as well. So it's a mixed uh, single family area. And we're just proposing uh, this type of home. As the board's aware, this is a uh, 90,000 square foot uh, area which requires 50 feet of uh, frontage setback. Um, what the applicant's proposing is to be in the same footprint, which is 25.2 feet. Um, as the first case that we talked about, um, you're allowed under the reconstruction after a catastrophe. This house happened to be a, uh, a burn victim mm -hmm. within yeah. the last uh, 12 months, I believe. Correct. Oh, uh, yeah, within the last, uh, I think it was July, yeah, so we're getting close to the, almost the nine yeah, month mark. within Correct. the last yeah. 12 months. So within the last we're month. well within the, in the mm -hmm. three year period. Correct. Um, you're staying within the same footprint. Yes, uh, we've also uh, came before Conservation and uh, Board of Health. Um, Board of Health has approved uh, an updated septic system that we're proposing on, on, on the lot as well. Um, conservation, we're working, we worked with, met before conservation regarding the removal of the house as well as the removal of the garage. Mm -hmm. um, so there uh, was some questions whether the, gra the garage was used as a habitat in some form or manner. Um, so we're looking to uh, remove that structure to uh, eliminate the controversy. Yeah, eliminate the controversy and really clean, clean up the uh, the area. It won't fit the new house anyways. So. Yeah. So. Do you have anything, Jim? No, I'm fine with that. I understand. Ron? No. Good. Dan? Yeah, I just want to clarify. So the existing garage is going to be removed and not replaced? Correct, Dan. Yes. Yep. We, we had to do... Yeah, we, yeah. We, we had to do some due diligence, and at the time we, we weren't through all the due diligence as we were processing. Um, so we just uh, finished up the, there was some asbestos in the, on the property. We had that removed that was in the barn area, and that's kind of what delayed some of the process. But yeah. that, those reports have been sent off to the building commissioner so we can remove that garage. We've informed the uh, conservation board as well um, because we, we did have it as a pending item. So we did uh, inform them as well. Yeah, and what he's doing is he's replacing that garage with two drive unders in the structure that he's proposing. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah, the, the the current garage. Uh, to highlight um, Mr. Fitzpatrick's comment. The current garage is a two-car garage with a loft above it um, that had a little bit of a kitchen and a bedroom in there and some other questionable uh, living inhabitants. Um, so that structure being removed, um, if you look at the square footage of everything that was on the parcel, we're, we're really actually reducing the square footage of what we're proposing with one structure um, mm -hmm. that's being before you, this board. This is probably going to qualify for the one with the most setbacks up in that area of all the ones we've heard over the last 10 years, Dan. <laughs> uh, John, you have anything? Uh, no, it, I mean, put it back in the same spot. There's uh, mm -hmm. no, no reason to fight that one. So. 
No, I, and I was just outlining what it was just so it was clear for everybody to mm -hmm. make it easier. Yep. Yes, sir. Do you have anything that you would want to add to this? The only thing I might want a little clarification for myself mm -hmm. might be uh, 25 foot off the road, and that's where the driveway is going to be. Are you going to be able to park in the driveway and not be out over hanging out into the right away? Yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah, we'll, no, we'll be we'll be able to park in the driveway area with with two spots and possibly a, a third that's in front of the septic area uh, that's up by the roadside. Um, we did do a similar um, property at 131 Franklin Street. I believe it was 20 feet off the road with an existing structure, and we were able to fit uh, three, you know, two cars in the driveway spots as well as one to the side. You, you did a structure right on this street a, year, a few years back. That was 30 feet off the street. Correct. Um, it's nine feet bigger than North Brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, we, you know, the, the, we were limited uh, because of the wetlands. There's some wetlands in the back of the property and stuff like that to shift this back. Um, you know, and then we're moving it off the existing footprint would have would have caused a yeah. lot more issues there. Um, so we we took all those into account and stuff like that. And we're really just looking to uh, yeah. clean up the neighborhood and better put a better product out there. No. Yeah. I think it's a nice addition to the to the neighborhood without going overboard. Mm -hmm. um, um, there's an attractive house across the street that was done within the last mm -hmm. five years, I think. Yep. Um, it's just going. It should complement the area. Yep. Um, yeah. So if no, nobody has anything else. I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Mo motion's been made. Second and third. Um, any further discussion? No. No. Um, roll call vote for closing the hearing. Aye, D'Angini. Lombard, aye. Forget, aye. Palmer, aye. Fitzpatrick, aye. Would you want to move to a decision? Yes. Mm. Sir. Can I have a motion for that, please? Motion to approve the 2024 20, 02 Bill Chair Road. Uh, as the plans committed. So the the, the plan uh, drawn by Spotter, uh, design and data. The date of the plan is October 17, 2023. Yes, sir. And there's a um, set of house plans. This is the house that you're going to use. Correct. Oh, yep. Okay. Um, it's drawn by Shane Structures. Uh, it says the Hawthorne Lane, the date of this plan. It's stamped in and received by the town clerk of January 17, 2024. 17, 24. Yep. Yeah. That's the one. Yep. Okay, so motion's been made and seconded. Um, any further discussion? Seeing as none, all in favor, roll call, please. Aye, Dan Heaney. Lombard, aye. Lodget, aye. Palmer, aye. Fitzpatrick, aye. So you know, you know the routine. They'll do the decision. It takes anywhere from two to four weeks, depending on how speedy town council gets back to us. You'll yep. be notified, and then you get your 20-day appeal period. Yep. Sounds good. Perfect. Thank you for the time. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we have one set of minutes, uh, I believe. You guys have the minutes with you? I do not. You do not? No, I do not. Okay, so we're going to table the minutes until the uh, next meeting. This is from April 6th. Oh, what is So what is not this? Minutes. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not April. I don't know what this thing is. I don't know where that came from. It's a summary for last year's board meetings. Okay. Anyways, whether we have minutes or not, I can't find them. So, I would entertain a, uh, a wait a minute. Do we have any updates on North Brown? Yes, we do. Sorry about that. I just got an email regarding North Brown. Okay. Okay. So, it looks so like let me get the update from the building commissioner first. So. The package should have the construction report updates that were submitted. I just received those uh, Monday. Again, put them in your folders. 
uh, shown some of the pictures of the site condition, site work that's going on on Nautica Way. Uh, they're digging the last foundation hole on the left side of Nautica Way now. They've got the right side of Nautica Way. They've done a, an excellent job cleaning it up. They're getting to the point where they possibly have the room now to even start putting some foundations in on that right hand side. Uh, I questioned uh, Neil Rybicki with regards to the uh, trap rock that's in the uh, storm catchments number 40. Uh, it's only a temporary solution because the bottom of the, the catchment is getting polluted by the siltation going in. So this is a, a hope to try and catch some of the siltation so it doesn't uh, take the bottom out continuously until they can establish the final uh, vegetation up on that side of, of uh, Nautical Way. Um, any questions on that? No. Nope. The other part of that, just to be a little bit ahead of the curve, is the total units sold that were market rate and affordable rate units as of, I don't know if he has the date here, but this is up until Nautical Way number 12, which is, he's got uh, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24 are the last units on that side. Uh, and that would be all the units he has either built or under construction. Uh, his affordable quota is such that he's still, uh, he's doing good with his numbers. He's got uh, about five more units that would, uh, market rate that would be able to be sold before he sells another affordable. And that's all I have on that. <clears throat> John, you said you had an email or something? Yeah, I just got it today from January, guys. So that just the update should be us an update with photos of uh, what the oh, okay. building uh, yeah. just takes. Right. So. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, we already signed the vultures, uh, vouchers that we had in here, Dan. Um, <laughs> the three of us signed them. So with that, I don't think we have any other business, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Make a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? No. Seeing as none, roll call vote, please. Ron Forge and I. Bombara, aye. Palmer, aye. Fitzpatrick, aye.